Uh, I just want to start, first of all, gents, with the uh, thoughts of the Foreign Secretary, David Lamy. He has said that we're going to suspend some arms sales, about 10%, just less than 10% of the different licences that exist. Let's hear from David Lamy and then we'll hear from Jonathan and from Maxwell. It is with regret that I inform the House today the assessment I have received leaves me unable to conclude anything other than that for certain UK arms exports to Israel, there does exist a clear risk that they might be used to commit or facilitate a serious violation of international humanitarian law. I have informed my right honourable friend, the Business and Trade Secretary, and he is therefore today announcing the suspension of around 30 from a total of approximately 350 to Israel as required under the Export Controls Act. Maxwell Harrison, he's a political commentator and former Reform UK candidate for Faversham and Mid Kent, uh, is with me. Also is Jonathan Liss, who's a political commentator. Maxwell, maybe I can start with you first. What do you make of this? Well, uh, last time I checked, Israel was an ally of the United Kingdom. And I would be very interested to see the, the legal evidence that has made Labour... I don't think you're going to see it. No, I, don't, I think you're right. I don't think we are going to see it. Um, but I would be very interested to see how they've come to this conclusion. No one, I, I think most reasonable people, would assume that Israel aren't doing everything correctly. Of course they're not. You know, we've seen evidence online and whatnot that they haven't been perfect. Um, but for the United Kingdom to be pulling support away at such a pivotal point in this conflict, I think it's quite questionable. And I wonder right now how British Jews feel right now listening to this news. I think probably they're very unsettled. Jonathan? What a grotesque conflation between British Jews and Israel. They are not the same. I can tell you one British Jew who's quite happy about the decision, and that's me, Maxwell. Um, the ICC, has, um, the top prosecutor, has recommended indictment for Benjamin Netanyahu for not only on war crimes, but for crimes against humanity. There is overwhelming evidence that Israel has committed war crimes, and David Lamy, who is a professed friend of Israel and could have gone much further the announcement just now has suspended only a tenth of the the possible less than a tenth actually have done so hmm? less than a tenth actually less than yeah. a tenth exactly uh, the license that he possibly that he, that he could have um and he's seen evidence that we haven't seen but i absolutely do trust david lammy um who has always erred on the side of supporting israel i'd have liked the uk government to go much further than it has what would, you, what would you have evidence, liked them to do jonathan I think that the UK government should have had a full um, ban on arms sales to Israel a very really? long time ago. Why? Absolutely, absolutely. When it became clear of what Israel was using those weapons for and using weapons in general for against the Palestinian people in De Gaza. Defending itself now, against mass say, terrorists, perhaps? That's not to say, that's not to say, Peter, that Israel um, shouldn't have security um, against sort of outside uh, sort of aggression. I thought it was um, completely reasonable for allies to step in uh, and come to Israel's aid when it was being attacked by Iran. Um, my screen's frozen. I hope you can see. No, we're, we're still we're still um, got you, Jonathan. Yeah. In terms of in terms of Gaza, there should absolutely be a UK ban on exports. Um, well, I mean, surely they're just defending themselves against Hamas terrorists to at least some extent, anyway. Are you talking to me still? Yeah, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I, I got distracted. So can you repeat that? It's a good thing. Sure. No, I'm saying that, that at least, at least... They, they have the right to... It's saying that they have, do they have the right to defend? No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that they do have the right to defend themselves. But the point is that some of those arms, and it's a very small number of arms that we sell to Israel in comparison to how many they use, I think it's about 2% of those arms sales. So it's not going to make a massive difference. But symbolically, I think it's important. It's a big political issue. But surely at least some of what Israel is doing is defending itself against some ass terrorists. I don't think that you can disaggregate very easily um, the weapons that are maybe used um, to defend itself and the weapons that are being used in a grotesque war of aggression against an entire people. Uh, and for that reason, if I was in the UK government or advising them, I would advise a full export ban, as Tony Blair did, um, that, that well-known communist, um, sort of pro-Palestinian activist did while he was prime minister. This is not, uh, you know, a, a completely extreme um, set of measures for the UK government to take. Uh, okay, Maxwell, what do you think of that? Well, I, I, I definitely do think that, you know, again, Israel hasn't done everything perfectly, and I, I absolutely believe it has a right to defend itself 
what happened on the 7th of October was absolutely despicable. And we don't really hear that enough from the pro-Palestinian protesters up and down London when they go for their march. about it all the time, Max. Um, no, no, we don't, Jonathan. No, we don't. How, how, however, yes, however, I do think this is a show of weakness. And I do think it's a symbol that the United Kingdom, although it, it's, it's, it's great in many respects, I do think, again, I think it should be questioned. And I think this evidence should be at least in part released because it is very important for British Jews in this in the United Kingdom, as well as other faith you know, communities out there as well, to see why we are coming to this conclusion. And, and, and also not, not, not just, I'm not sure. saying for a second that all Jewish people support the state of Israel, but there are a lot of us, I'm not Jewish and I support the state of Israel, for example. Mm. I don't support Netanyahu, I think he's an awful person, but I certainly yes. support his right to exist. And, I think and, it's, and, and, and it's people. I think it's, I, I really would urge you to reconsider this line that you're, this argument you're making, because as a Jewish person, I actually find it very offensive. Because you're saying the British people uh, are somehow, you know, to be a British Jew is to somehow support uh, aggression against the Palestinian people. That is simply not true. Israel is certainly different from Judaism, and Israel is separate from the Israeli government. I think Jewish people are perfectly capable of separating out their support for the state of Israel, which many of them obviously have, and an Israeli government, which is being found by the top criminal court in the world to have been seriously likely um, to have committed war crimes. Uh, and, 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 and actually, and, and in support, it. and sort of ish, weirdly um, for me, in support of Jonathan Lesser's argument there, we actually have a heck of a lot of people in Israel having, you know, withdrawing their labour, exactly. having, huge, right having huge uh, protests against Netanyahu and so on. But I just want to actually talk about something else. I want to ask Maxwell's opinion on this, uh, on what, uh, related to this, uh, it, certainly in terms of support for Gaza, because Jeremy Corbyn, the former leader of Labour, he's now an independent MP and he has joined up yeah. with four other independent MPs. Now they have a grouping called the Independent Alliance, the same uh, size number of MPs as the party that Maxwell stood for in the last election in Faversham and Mid-Kent. Five MPs. What do you make of this development, Maxwell? Well, I, I'm not surprised really. You know, I never thought that Jeremy Corbyn, once he'd been re-elected, re that he was going to be quiet. And actually, you know, him forming this group, uh, again, any sort of groups in Parliament, I think, is is a good thing it's good for democracy um however i i have always questioned the allegiances that jeremy corbyn has associated himself with the groups in particular in which he stood by side by side and again this rise in sectarian politics it's it's been said for a couple a couple of years now that this could be the case and now we are seeing it in in the flesh um so i mean uh, it doesn't really impact me so much as someone who supports reform uh, however if I'm right now in the Labour Party, I would be a little bit concerned because Jeremy Corbyn does represent a more, so let's say, hard left faction of the Labour Party. And the more that, you know, Keir Starmer upsets his own benches, I think the increased likelihood is we might see some of those... Well, there are joining. seven of them suspended at the moment, including uh, Jeremy Corbyn's BFF, John McDonnell. Uh, yeah. Jonathan, are you concerned about this? No, I think anyone should be concerned about it. Corbyn is perfectly within his rights to form a grouping with other independent MPs because, as we know, um, groups of MPs um, have more influence in Parliament. And, you know, when you, when you have um, sort of collectives of MPs, um, they can sort of pull uh, resources and they can sort of act uh, as, one, as one body and um, have more influence, which is obviously what um, independent MPs are looking for when they don't have um, the, the powerful backing of a major political party okay. behind them. And look, I think it's really wrong to talk about this sectarian politics. There is there's sectarian, sectarian politics sectarian, from those, from those something MPs. There's something sectarian about it, Peter. Yes, there is. These, these, why? Because they are radical Islamists, uh, they're supporting they're radical Islamists, uh, and they're, they've influenced many of their views. Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence of them being radical Islamists? They're definitely... Where's the evidence for that? They are, they are hard left, they're saying all sorts of things about Gaza that I think are really distasteful, are really worrying, and they're supporting all sorts of very, very questionable people. What have they, what have they, said, that, what have they said in particular that offends you? There are many things. I don't have anything in front of me, but they, they, there are right. many I mean, things think, that these I people have said. These are, I mean, I'm Jeremy you. Corbyn talked about his friends and Hamas. No, 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 these are, that was that, that, that was before seventh October. That was many, many years. That was before he was well, he, he, He's been to many, many events Look, since Peter, the seventh. Hold on, let me speak. Since the seventh of October, Jeremy Corbyn and those other MPs have been have attended many events in favour of what is happening. Uh, of certainly from the Gazan perspective, I think they've lost their minds over this, and I think it's very, very concerning. Look, if you have any evidence that Corbyn or any of these independent MPs have, for example, welcomed what um, happened on the 7th of October, 
I'd be very interested to hear it. If you have any evidence that they have supported Hamas since the 7th of October, I'd be very welcome to hear that. I think these are quite serious accusations you're making. I don't think it's sectarian. I think they're radicalism. It's the fact that they might um, call it... I don't think they personally example. are radical Islamists, but they have certainly supported people who are. Okay, but, but Jonathan, Jonathan, we, we have to remember that in the general election, they campaigned primarily on the issue of Gaza. You have a general election in the United Kingdom is supposed to be about the direction of this country. So when you are you know, on, a, on a campaign trail talking about the affairs of another country, primarily focusing on that for a particular... Oh, also, another, of also, also a group of people who want to destroy this country. Yes. Right. I think so, that, you know, when you're yeah, focusing on... Let the, Maxwell on have a say and then I'll let you have your say, Jonathan. So, so when you are focusing on a, on a voter base, primarily on one topic, which is, of course, you know, you know, quite pertinent to the faith of which they are, they, they are from. And I, th I think that has to sort of raise question marks because the United Kingdom, we should not be having general elections wherein candidates are being elected on the affairs happening in another country. That's not really how we should be doing things in our politics. Okay. And Final, that is okay. That's sec that's sectarian politics. Final word from no, Jonathan, then I've got to go to a break. The, 2000, the 2005 general election was fought on something happening in another country. That was, that was fought uh, primarily on the UK's uh, invasion of Iraq two years earlier. It's completely not true, not historical to say that elections can't be fought on, on foreign issues. Elections have been fought on foreign issues going back to the 19th century for things that were happening, you know, uh, in the British Empire and the sort of Ireland, the issue of Home Rule Ireland, all kinds of things. That's, that's because they're related it's to completely, Britain. Completely that's because they're related to Britain. Electors to vote for something they will have with whatever they want, surely. Well, no, that's because they're related to Britain. So we, we can more than happily you know, ha have elections where we talk about how the United Kingdom acts, but we're not talking about that when we talk about Gaza. And that's what these it candidates is. were doing on the elections. No, it's, it's no, not it so much. It's not, not a British government. issue. It's not a British issue. Okay, let, government. let Jonathan speak. Jonathan. It's of course it's about the UK government. It's about the UK government's approach to the Israeli government and its approach to a ceasefire. If the UK government had come out strongly condemning Israel's aggression from the start, and so you know having an even hand. In, in what way is it aggressive? Why, why was it aggressive at the start, Jonathan? That just doesn't make sense to me. That Israel has been aggressive from the start. Israel was defending itself from the seventh of October attacks by Hamas terrorists. We also have these pro-Palestinian MPs who have, are parroting Hamas figures on deaths in Gaza, saying it's forty thousand. The only evidence for that is what Hamas is saying: Hamas terrorists. Peter, I'd be, I'd be only too happy for um, foreign journalists to be allowed access to Gaza so they could be independent of verification. Me too. Guess who's banning that? Guess who's not allowing that? Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not defending the Israeli government. That. I'm not defending the and Israeli government. I, I haven't defended the Israeli government at any point no, in not, this I'm conversation. Not saying, I'm not saying, but look, that based on that, that one thing you just said about the Hamas figures, um, in general, Hamas has actually been found, and I'm not defending Hamas for a second, obviously, but the health ministry has been found in general in the past to have been accurate. A lot of uh, independent experts suggest... Well, you're, talk, you're, talking, about like UN, you're talking about people like the UN, and I... You're talking about people like the UN, Jonathan, and I don't trust the UN, and I don't trust UNRWA. I don't trust UNRWA. I think there are, a, a number of them have been found to be Hamas supporters.